now that we have executives data frame which contains name page and their date of birth and if it's not available we have nat or none values now comes the cleaning and manipulating tables part where we'll try to join different tables so eventually we want to join this executives data frame with the company ceo's data frame that we already have based on the name of the particular ceo now looking at the executive df we can notice that the name in executive df has underscores as you can see here which will not match the names of executives in company ceo's df because there we had removed the underscores if you remember correctly then uh, we will therefore need to clean the name field in the executive df and uh, uh, so like to see actually it's happening uh, you can like take a look at the name and bond date data in executive df so we do this via projection which is basically this thing where we are passing a list of the column that we need and it will give only those two columns and not give the page column here you can see that there are underscores in the name so we will as earlier we will just clean the name by removing underscores and uh, we will store in a new field called as clean name so here we are doing that using the lambda function where we are for each x that is each name we are replacing the underscore with a space and uh, as you can see this is the new exit df where it contains a new column named clean name which is julie speed then kumar birla with space in between now we can do the same thing via sql as well for example, we'll save the data frame first and then extract just the name and clean name using SQL as it is done here. So we are doing exec df to SQL, which again creates a table name temp exec and we are passing all these parameters. Then we using pandas dot read sql query we are using this query to create a clean name column in the table which is select name comma replace name uh, in which we will for each name we will replace underscore with a blank space and it store it as a clean name from this particular table and we are also passing connection as another parameter and you can see this is the clean name that we have and uh, so if you want to check uh, like for kumar birla's entry we can say like for exec df return where the exec df clean name is equal to kumar space birla and it will return this particular line and we can do the same check-in in, in uh, sql as well using this particular line that is pd dot read sql query and the query will be select star from temp exec where clean name is equal to kumar birla and we are passing the connection as the parameter now that we have somewhat cleaner exec dia we will try to put it together in this fourth step so now join we will join exec df with company ceo's df to get the whole company information so there, here comes the joining part. So we will start with a simple join between company CEO's DF and exec DF and purses it to the database. We'll then check how many companies did not have a match on CEO name. So this is syntax for merging. If we are merging exec DF and from that we are getting uh, taking these two columns which is clean name of the ceo and bond then left join will be on executive and right join will be on the clean name because in the left we have a, 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 like exec data base and uh, on the right we have other where we have the clean name so this is the overall result and as you can see we have missed some of the entries because earlier we had around 181 or 182 entries and here we are getting 177 so moving on we'll have to find the misses in the join right so note that the join 
above as i mentioned earlier which is also mentioned here has resulted in 177 rows however there are more rows in company ceo's df so we are missing some companies and we can see which companies are missing using a left out join setting indicator equal to true which will allow us to see which tuples in company ceo df failed to find a match so here is a code uh, for the same this is low left join df again we are creating a data frame wherein we are passing like company ceo's df and from that executive and the company we are merging it to executive uh, executive df uh, from that clean name and the date of birth so we are doing the left join on executive where this is the executive part and right join and clean name and in this we are setting it to the left out join wherein previously it was different like we didn't have uh, so by uh, default we did not uh, it is not left and now we are setting it to the left out join and we are setting indicator equal to true now here we can see like uh, in left join df where in mer underscore merge is not equal to both like if the value is not present equal in both then these are the entries for that like these ceos are not present in the final outcome that we saw earlier now comes the what difficult or tough part of the lecture which is uh, take, like taking care of this CEOs or executives having some special characters in the name. So here we can see this U is a special character. This this in this D'Souza, this is a special character. Then here again a special character O. So how to take care of that? Because we can't do the exact matching if there are characters like this, right? So uh, to, for this uh, special characters, these were garbled initially. So we'll take a closer look at these garbled names and then we'll determine how to find matches without cleaning them. And for this, we will use approximate matching or similarity matching. So to give you a quick review, here we had uh, imported Pi, uh, imported SSJ from Pi strings. I am joined, and we will be using that. If you don't have a lot of idea about this, I'll suggest to just like look at the documentation of this particular library to get a better understanding, and also somewhat understanding of Jacquard uh, similarity will be pretty helpful. But if you don't understand this, then again, it's okay because it is a statistical term. Now, uh, we will. Uh, this code is used to find the names with invalid characters using uh, the validation rules. So, uh, like this is pretty so smart. We have first defined a replace character that is Q, for, and we have set failed is equal to false. Then for each name, uh, in the executive TF and in that clean name. Uh, we are finding the illegal name and then finally we are setting failed equal to true if uh, there is an illegal name so this if clause will determine the illegal name and then it will set to set failed to true if failed is true then we will raise this found illegal name error. now as expected there are this one two three four five names which we already pretty much found from here this, this is like these are the names first second third fourth and fifth so these are illegal names now we will work around the errors using approximate matching and for that we'll first import some similarity matching code to do the approximate uh, match between the original names and the names returned by wikipedia so we are going to match the string approximately via n grams or q grams which are the sequences of n or q characters and uh, in a particular case we are using five grams uh, so here you can see we have set q well equal to five 
and if you look at the description then this is the signature and it will re return tokens that are sequences of q consecutive characters and these are the arguments you can have a look at it for better understanding now this is how company ceo's data frame looks like with 185 rows and this is what executive data frame look like so it's 8 to 182 rows now we will do a similarity join where we are using this ssj which was imported earlier for doing the similarity join uh, we will first reset in this line we will reset the index so there is a unique index field in the company ceo's df data frame uh, and if you run this code you can notice that we are able to match 182 companies which is better than 177 which was which is what we got using the exact match and for doing this approximate matching we use this ssj dot jacquard join now what is this jacquard jacquard join so if you again click on shift tab you will get all the definitions here and all the attributes that we have passed so this is left table which is companies uh, company ceo's data frame then right table is executive data frame L, left key attribute right key attribute are these then left join attribute and right join attribute are executive and clean name respectively then uh, our tokenizer is uh, tok which we created in this line and uh, uh, likewise we have set all the attributes for this particular uh, function and uh, exactly the definition of jacquard join is mentioned here so it uh, joins like two table using jacquard similarity major so this is the mathematical definition of the jacquard similarity score so uh, in short it's not doing the exact uh, similarity check it's doing an approximate check wherein we are setting a threshold value and above that we are taking it as a match so moving on finally we have company info plus ceo info together so this is what a total data frame looks like it is company data frame dot we have mer uh, dot merge and we have merged output pairs uh, which uh, are left on executives column and right on l executives column so this is what is the final outcome in the total data frame now as we have a, a total data frame which contains companies info then ceos info all together along with their name and uh, like a complete name or clean name and uh, their date of birth we now move forward to visualizing the results so that we can like pictureize it so the first thing when it gets to visualization is using matplotlib library so we are just giving this command of uh, percent matplotlib inline so that our graphs will be plot in line so to understand the distribution of birth dates we will count the number of ceos born on each date and then we will plot a histogram of the result and take a look and see whether they are uh, like 40 years old or older and what is their distribution so for grouping ceos based on their birth dates we will use group by command which allows us to coalesce the data by groups and in pandas a group is a special object with a set of rows uh, so based on the input that we give us pandas will group the will group the different entries based on what we want it to be so here we are grouping the uh, the group we are making groups in the total data frame based on the bond or the bond column which is this one which represents the birth dates so we are doing that here and now 
we'll have a look at when people are born by sorting the data by the column born. So we are doing that here, sorting the values based on born. And here we get the sorted values, which shows that they are at 182 rows. So we can pretty much assume that oh, uh, there are no common birth dates. So instead of you know just looking at this part, we will do the counting and see how many CEOs are like uh, born on the same date. So, and uh, we will ignore the values that are empty or non or nat values. So, we will, uh, if we ignore the non values or nat values, we will get 98 rows in total. And the code is like uh, we are creating birth dates, which is total dot group by where group it is grouped by born, and uh, we are counting uh, the number of entries that have same bond date and here we are doing it uh, the same thing in sql as well as you can see first we uh, converted this data frame to an sql table uh, named as total info and the parameters are same as earlier by default sql will include the net values called null in sql and if we want to exclude it, we need to include where. It's not like uh, first in the where clause, we'll see where dash dash is not null. So we have done it here. Select born comma count company from total info where born is not null and group by born. So born is not null. So this outcome is same as this one, which we did here. Now, to get a better sense of how birth dates cluster, we'll first calculate the decade in which each CEO is born, group them by the decade, and then plot by decade using a bar chart. Sounds pretty interesting, right? So here we are adding a decade column to exit data, exit DF data frame, and then we'll populate it so uh, first uh, we are creating b days variable uh, from the total data frame where we are first dropping the NAs in the bond column that which contains the birth dates and then we are applying this particular lambda function so that we can populate based on the decade so as you can see here we are doing b day dot year slash or divided by 10 so that we will uh, be able to get the decade in which they are born and so we are storing it in uh, the uh, we are creating bond decade column in executives df and then we are uh, storing the b days value in that particular column and finally comes the plotting part to see the actual result and test our hypothesis so executive df bond decade dot preset index and then we'll group by bond de uh, decades then count and then plot where we set the kind equal to bar and here is the result for the same and as you can see for most of the ceos the bond decade is like earlier to 1980s so we can safely say that a lot of them are populated here so they are older than 40. yeah and this is followed by an exercise to take this one step further you can uh, link the company's table with another data set to determine the market for each company and see whether there is a correlation between the kind of company and the age of CEO, like if the company is in finance sector, are the CEOs aged more? If it is a tech company, are the CEOs younger? So that is an exercise for you guys. So if we take a look at this whole data wrangling process, you can see the importance of data wrangling where we started by installing all the libraries, then we first got our hands 
like in acquiring stage we got our hands and company database then ceos for getting their birth dates then we did the initial joins and then we did the similarity join because we found that we can't uh, basically join two tables based on the exact joins that we usually use wherein came the part of jacket join then after that we uh, grouped uh, ceos based on their birth date then we created a decade column and which was sufficient to test our hypothesis so i hope you have uh, understood each and every part if not i'll suggest to take a better look at the notebook and if you find found any if you find any difficulties then a simple google search will be really helpful thank you so much